Hey again everyone, it's been a while, but I'm back with a look at the free image editor Krita and the AI image editing plugin, specifically using it with the newly supported Flux Context model. Context is a 12 billion parameter model that's designed specifically for editing existing images based on text instructions. It's a model that attempts to understand the difference between keep this and change that. Context actually understands, well, context, that's the name I guess. You feed it an image and tell it to change the car to red, and it'll change the car to red. Not the whole image, not the background, just the car. Which sounds like it should be a simple task, but getting AI to do this kind of surgical edit has been difficult, and the fact that this model can do it is incredibly impressive. Where this model really shines, I think, is in character consistency. You know how with most AI models, if you try to edit the same person across multiple images, by sometimes even the second, maybe third edit, it will look like a completely different person? Well, with context, that'll be less of a problem. Facial features, clothing, artistic style, it's all consistent through multiple rounds of editing. The model handles a bunch of different editing tasks. Uh, local edits, where you're changing one specific thing. Global edits, where you're changing the whole vibe of the image. Style transfers. Uh, text editing within images. And what the authors refer to as character reference which is keeping the same person or object consistent across different scenes. I know there are some style transfer IP adapters for Flux, but ideally context should be able to manage those kind of tasks out of the box. Now, here's the thing about prompting context. You describe what you should change and not what's already there. So instead of a photo of a woman in a blue dress standing in a kitchen, you'd say change the dress to blue or uh, move her to a space station. The model already knows what's in the image, you're just telling it what to modify. There's actually an excellent prompting guide linked below that goes deeper into this. I'm not going to rehash the whole thing here because they did a much better job explaining it than I could, but the thing to remember is be specific about the changes and be explicit about what needs to stay the same. The model is also very good at understanding visual cues. Inside Krita you can mask the area that you want to change and it'll focus on those areas. But unlike traditional in-painting, you don't need to spend an hour basically rotoscoping the entire subject. Generally, just a crude rectangular mask is sufficient to guide the model. In addition to masks, you can also draw bounding boxes and instruct context to work within the defined areas. Alright, so let's get this thing up and running. First, you'll need Krita and the AI Diffusion plugin. For this recording, I'm using Krita version 5.2.9 and version 1.36.1 of the Generative AI plugin for Krita. If you haven't installed Krita and configured the plugin before, do that now and open Krita to make sure all the secondary components have installed properly. Next, download the models from Hugging Face. You'll need the main context model and the VAE. And there's also a third model linked from the Krita AI plugin GitHub page that you want to grab. Copy the downloaded models to the required subdirectories within your Krita AI Diffusion Models folder. On Windows, this is somewhere like app data slash roaming slash Krita slash AI Diffusion slash models, or wherever you've got your other models stored. Open Krita and then click the configuration cog for the AI plugin. Find the Flux preset and duplicate it. And then change the name to whatever you want. The context works fine. Select the copied preset that you've just renamed from the drop-down list. Next, select the Flux1 Dev Context FP8 model from the Checkpoints drop-down. Select the AE VAE from the VAE drop-down list. It's up to you here, but it may also be best to clear the prompt preset from the Flux Context prompt string. The other thing you may want to adjust is the automatic batch size handling within the Krita AI plugin. I've had issues with the plugin generating duplicates of images on its own when I've only been trying to use a batch of one. It seems the backend is automatically resizing the batches, so you may need to disable that if you're running into the same behavior. And often the duplicate images were of lower quality than the first image of the batch anyway, so they weren't usable. Click the AI plugin configuration cog, and then open up the performance menu. Under the performance menu, hit custom. Lower the batch size from its current value, in my case 4, to 1. You might also want to review the sampler settings in your context preset. Many people recommend using a CFG of 1 and 20 steps. 
and the default in my template was using a CFG of 3.5. You've already seen some of the sample generations from the model, but here's a gist of using it in Krita. With the base image open on the canvas, drag your second image into the workspace as a new layer. Resize the image if necessary with the resize tool and press enter when done. This blurry helmet sprite has a hand in the corner, so I'm going to crudely slice out the right half, mirror it, and paste it over top of the left half as a new layer. Then I'm deleting the left half underneath and flattening the two layers into one. Then I've saved this as a new credit document with save as, so I don't have to repeat this step. Click this little button and add a new control layer. Select reference for the control layer type and select your reference layer image from the drop-down list. For the prompt, explain the task you want to accomplish. When generating the first composite, you want both the input and the background to be active. So you want that little eye icon to be lit on both of the layers. On subsequent generations, when you're not using the layer as an input and you've disabled your control layer, you deactivate the composite layer by graying out the eye icon for that layer or deleting that layer. When the image is done, it'll appear in the box below. You can click on it or mouse over it to preview, but these images will be discarded unless you save them. Save the canvas that you're working on to a new created document using save as and select the .kra file type. Then right click on the image in the preview window and hit save. The PNG will be output to the same directory that you've saved the credit document. Hitting apply will bring the image into the canvas and you can repeat the process for iterative generations. I have run into issues with the active layer seemingly being ignored or credit creating layers that can't be deleted or moved. So you may want to save your output image, then drag them back into credit as a new document and just do one iteration per document, saving and repeating. It doesn't really take you any more time anyway. When testing things like this, I really try to come up with weird edge cases where people might run into problems. And with context, it was quite a bit of a struggle. Here's a quick look at a few attempts at how context handled this difficult task. With low information input images like this, it can take quite a bit of finessing to get the results you're looking for, but I think this did remarkably well. It does a pretty good job when you give it two high quality images to work with, and it can even make sense of this pixelated smudged mess most of the time. I continued a similar task trying to upscale the character defeat portraits from Street Fighter 2, so let's see how those did. It's generally not feasible to do this because of how long it takes, but Context can handle compositing two high resolution images. The model is trained to handle up to 1024 by 1024, I believe. But I've done composites using two 1920 by 1080 images. It's hit and miss, and often the prompt has to be just right to get what you want, but when it works, it works great. But unfortunately, these generations probably took somewhere between 15 and 25 minutes each. I think that's about all I wanted to cover today. I didn't touch on live painting because with only 12 gigabytes of VRAM, live painting isn't really feasible with the Flux Context model in my system. It just takes too much time to generate the replacement samples. I haven't been able to get the Flux HyperLore working yet in Critif, but that might make live painting workable on a system like this. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried Flux Context yet and what you think. This is the first time I've really found the image generation space interesting since the lower training arrived for stable diffusion. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.